Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually talking about you. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head. Which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode nine of the Registered Nerd Podcast. Um, today, we're going to go back to a topic we've already covered a little bit. We're going to talk about the current state of video games. And uh, I think today we wanted to talk about the Battle Royale phenomenon and also talk a little bit about um, uh, some of these, some of the expectations for games and their longevity. Um, today with me, I have Snack Packs and Webbed. And uh, let's just jump right into it, as Philip DeFranco would say. So... Obviously, PUBG, which is the worst name for a video game ever, was a huge phenomenon. Everybody knows that. Pretty much everybody played it. I never really liked it. I think it's, I... It's very... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to ex- describe it, because it's very You can't just not like things because you're bad. That's, that's not... No, I, 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 <laughs> I got a chicken dinner, and then I immediately stopped playing. Um... No, it's it felt like an early access game that was always going to feel like an early access game. It's very um, buggy. It's very buggy. I understand. Uh, at the start, they had very limited resources. Obviously, after they made, um, I believe, all the money in the world, they probably could have brought on a bigger team and really done something cool with it. But I don't know. From what I've seen, I haven't played in a while. But it took uh, it took gaming by storm. And like, why is that? I wondered that when I played. And I think it's because it's it checks a weird box with people that are very competitive where it's like at the end of it, you're standing on a pile of a hundred corpses and you can look at yourself and be like, wow, I'm the best. Now what normally happens is I found that the pace of the game personally is 15 minutes of scavenging empty buildings to get a decent amount of equipment, getting into that first gunfight. And I don't know. I didn't like the gun handling mechanics. I didn't really like a lot of mechanics in the game. And so usually that gunfight, that first gunfight was 50-50 for me, whether I would die. (laughs) So a lot of times it was 15 minutes of of boredom and a little bit of tension and then death, restart, you know, play again. Or if you jump down into an area that was populated, you either you made it out or you just immediately were killed. Right. But even that, I mean, that's still a lot of downtime. I mean, you got to sit in the loading screen, you got to sit in the plane, you got to jump. Like, I think that's my issue with the genre is initially I was pretty into it, too. I mean, I jumped on the PUBG thing a little after Snacks did, but he's the one that introduced it to me, PUBG. And I got into it and I was like, oh, we should play, we should play. And he was actually starting to kind of be like, eh. And I think that's why, like, I'm I'm to that point now with all of them too. I just tried Apex Legends, and it's they're all kind of the same thing. You're scavenging for loot. A lot of times you can't find the loot that you want, and then you get into a firefight. And for me, a lot of times it's like you almost sometimes you get into a firefight with like two different squads at the same time, and you end up getting sandwiched and screwed over. Right. It's just a clusterfuck. I I I like the idea of competitive game because you know like there i think a lot of people do like that like oh i I beat all other 99 people right but i like competitive gaming like cs that's classic i know um but you know there's a strategy to things that's why i like dota and things like that too because there's a strategy if you execute it as a team well, counter Or even with Dota. individual skill, there's a lot yeah. more of a controlled environment in, in what you can do. Battle Royales are just a clusterfuck all the time. Well, and... well, Counter-Strike and Dota, I think, like you said, are both very polished. And that's the difference between particularly PUBG. PUBG is a very unpolished um, kind of game. But that's why I think it's funny that they're trying to make like competitive scene for it, because I don't see it ever working out. It's just too uncontrollable there's no balancing like if you look at counter strike right. dota even overwatch you know these other games like they have a way of balancing metas and things like that to try to make them uh, like controllable in a competitive environment like right. regular um I, sports I, are you know also personally and and this doesn't like this isn't the end of my enjoyment of a game but i personally always thought PUBG looked like shit like I understand it was, you know, had a limited development team and stuff, but it was a lot of 
a lot of assets that they just kind of bought and slightly modified and flew and threw around the map. And I was like, I never thought it was a good looking game at all. Um, or, e- you know, even with how they built the world, the world always felt very fake to me. Um, did any of you guys play Fortnite? Uh, yes. I, I yeah. think, I think I played like three games of Fortnite and it lost me with, um, some people are really good at that game and that game does have a whole nother skill level of the building. And, and right now I, I've seen some videos of people playing and they're throwing down structures as fast as they can run and like changing the map. And I kind of get that's, that's kind of the appeal of that game to me. I think I would have preferred the original game where it was like build a fort, defend it from zombies. You know, the, the, the game that essentially failed that just got completely crushed before they yeah. were like, well, let's just make a battle Royale mo- mode. And, then all of a sudden it became a huge success. Yeah, if you're if you're gonna have a building mechanic, definitely like the zombie thing, like it's kinda like a left for dead ish type scenario. Like I kinda right. like the idea of building a fort. It's like the Sims meets Left For Dead or something, yeah. you know? That, like that's kinda cool to me. Um building in a battle royale, like I just remember like every time I've ever played Fortnite which has been pretty few because I don't enjoy the building aspect. That's the biggest turnoff for me. Right. It you, was the same. You're like, I'm trying to just shoot people and they're just like building towers up into the sky and like you have no idea what's going on. I just, it's too much for me. Yeah. I, th- that's why I only made it a couple games uh, into that. And I was like, you know what? I'm not really enjoying this. Maybe if I played it some more and, and got a hang of the mechanics, but I just, it didn't grab my interest. And I have, I think I have too many shooting- other things to play. The shooting mechanics in it are pretty wonky too, in my opinion. I, I don't think yeah. that like the, not that like realism has to be the thing, but I just the guns and stuff that's just kind of clunky. Yeah. Just to me, I don't know. I, to each their own. I don't want to knock on people who like it because it definitely yeah. has a big following. But I, that's the one thing about PUBG that I thought was cool is they did try to make like the bullet drop and stuff on these guns like somewhat realistic and things it was kind of interesting um the rest of the game does look like shit in my opinion but that's the one one of the things i respected about that right Uh, i mean i mean it's just battle royale games it's just they're they're a fad just kind of like everything else you know like a couple years ago it was like everybody wanted to be call of duty and then everybody wanted a survival game uh and then everybody wanted a mobas so it's like, it, every- yeah, and and that's one of the things we're going to talk about is is the fad chasing because I think I think we're hitting the end of the battle royale fad. I, I don't think once these games, God, I um, hope so. Yeah, once the once the genre exists, it's going to exist forever. But I think um, we're I think Atlas is probably the end of it. I don't think Atlas will be popular for as long as Fortnite was, and Fortnite wasn't. Fortnite is still kind of big, but. Um, I think Atlas ate up a lot of its player count, and Fortnite obviously ate up a lot of, of I mean, Apex. Oh, geez. Yeah, what's Atlas? So you mean Apex? A- I'm sorry, I keep, I always call Apex Atlas. There was a there was a MOBA a while. Or, no, it wasn't a MOBA. What was it? There was a game called Atlas, and I always get Atlas and Apex uh, turned around in my head because they have a similar art style. But um, I will say Apex is the most polished. I think it's the one that I had the most fun playing. Um, yeah, Apex I, is very fluid. Yeah, I, I love. But the, in the end, it's the same shit, though. It's, it's the it's, same shit. You're you're looking for shit. Snacks yep. and I have played it together, and it's like, you know, one of us finds a good gun. Everyone else has a fucking pistol. You meet these guys like two minutes later, and they're just like, boom, you're dead. And yeah. I will say the one thing that Apex has done that I think pretty much all online shooters need to take from here on out is the is the contextual communication system, though. Like, yeah, I think that's actually really it, cool in the, in the game. Yeah, credit where credit's due. That is brilliant, and it works perfectly. Um, uh, Spaz and I played a game. Uh, he was the one that got me into it, and we played a game. Um, and he's like, I can't, I can't be on the mic right now because my girlfriend's doing something in the same room. But I was like, okay, so we'll, how, how are we going to communicate? I hate typing you know, during a first-person shooter. And uh, he's like, oh, no, there's a contextual, like, Com- communication system. I was like, "Oh, this is going to be a clusterfuck," and it worked perfectly. Like you, you knew exactly where the team wanted to go. You saw exactly where things were spotted, and I think that really needs to be put into pretty much all first-person shooters from here on out. At least all, obviously, multiplayer ones. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't see 
I just don't know. It's it's a weird it's a weird combination because the one thing that um, Apex does really differently is it's also a hero shooter, um, a lot like Overwatch, where you have classes. Yeah. Um, which is kind of cool. You know, you can have your hero, you can have your tank, you can have your you know uh, DP. DP uh, I, I don't really want to say DPS because well, there's more like a support. There's like a yeah. utility, and then there's like a. Uh, uh, the tanky guy is not really a tank. He just kind of throws down a shield just to give you a little extra cover. Yeah, I mean that's kind of his. That's kind of his support role. Um, yeah, yeah, I tried to tank with him a little bit, holding up his shield because he can yeah. aim down the sights with his shield up. It doesn't. Yeah, that's shit. who I primarily played. No, you still you still drop really quickly. The the TTK in that game is really really fast. And I don't know, maybe I'm just getting old. Well, I am getting old, but I I, I like games with a little bit of a lower um, time to kill. Just maybe Halo burn that into me because I, I don't know. I like to have I like to have time to react, and in that game, I felt like the time to kill was actually surprisingly fast. Um, not as fast as PUBG, where sometimes it's like you're dead before you know what happened. But I mean, Counter Strike can be that way too, I guess. But sometimes yeah, it can. I think. Well, and and here's the other thing I thought we should talk about is I see a lot of talk about dead games. This game's dead. This game's dead, and. Some of these games, people start to talk about like, oh, that game's dead. Well, that game's been popular for four years. And they talk about like its death as some sort of failing. And I think there's a weird expectation uh, with people are like, oh, I'm like this game, this game will be played forever. It's like, that's not how games work with the exception of of Counter-Strike and maybe StarCraft. um, There's very few games that like have an online presence for forever. And even when they do, like the number of players are not going to stay at their peak for forever. It's going to significant because gamers like novelty. We like new things that come out. We're going to play the new things and maybe we'll go back to the old stuff every once in a while. But there's this weird expectation. I remember, was it, um, was it Overwatch or Heroes of the Storm that Blizzard is kind of getting rid of the professional scene for? Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm. Here, yeah, here's the storm. Completely got rid of it already. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Heroes of the Storm is, is, a couple years old. I mean, I, I was playing it. Not that old. Well, it's like I said, well, it's, again, it's part, a of, it was part of the a MOBA they fad. They jumped on the know? MOBA fad and they it's, realized it's, that, you know, there's the balancing in it is a cluster fad. because they keep right. releasing new hero, new hero, new hero really fast they compared. Like it, Dota yeah. and League don't release heroes that quickly for the game because well, they're trying to balance the game right. very consistently for the professional scene there's a huge professional scene and a lot of well, money and a lot right. of companies based on that and they well, don't and, want to and not only that, that not only that i mean dota dota had been around for how long how many years before like blizzard picked it up you know what i mean so like right. those the the original balances were pretty much already set so they kind of have a good a good base to build off before they started releasing and rebalancing heroes Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, my point is though is like I would still count Heroes of the Storm as a very successful game. It made them a lot of money, a lot of people played it, and maybe it's time is maybe it's fading, but is that a failure? I mean, how how long do you expect the average game to to make you money? Like I I don't think that's a failure. I think if everyone stopped playing Overwatch tomorrow, that game wouldn't be a failure. Lots of people played it, it made them a lot of money. Like I think the expectation has gotten very skewed where people are like, I, I don't, every game I buy, I don't plan to play it for forever. Uh, especially because when I came up in gaming, it was all single player games. You got your game at the store, you played it for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, and then you kind of normally didn't touch it again because you had newer yeah, games. Now with the, the exception of, yeah, and then you kind of moved on with your life. So that's my perspective on games. Now there's, yeah. you know, the there's online competitive I, games have really only existed since the what mid two thousands, right? Uh, you you think about the original PlayStation, Xbox, all those. They didn't even have online connectivity, really. Right. You know, there was and, no Xbox Live in the until later in the original Xbox life, and even then, it was not like it is now where it's easy to use you know we played halo multiplayer on local multiplayer by connecting hardlining two xboxes together right exactly so i just i just don't understand what the expectation is because i you almost see the the derision in the comments where like oh that's a dead game well the game's been out for three years like 
people have new things to occupy their time, like very few games. And I mean, and that goes into with what happened with Heroes of the Storm, where you said where they started to add, you know, they start to add so many heroes because that's what they're trying to keep retention because they're trying to keep people like, oh, buy this new hero. It plays differently. It'll keep you interested in the game. But as you said, that can completely fuck balance up. Well, especially with that game, that's a hybrid of all their franchises, right? So like they want to get all the fans of everybody involved and excited right. and people who are like big starcraft people are like you know i want to see so and so you know and when they don't get them for a while they're like what the hell so like blizzard's releasing these things to appease them you know yeah and it's so and, and there's also the element of new heroes and this this happens in all kinds of games it happens in tabletop gaming i remember in first edition edition x-wing every time they would release a new like a new couple ships, uh, they, they would do ships in waves. They'd usually be between three and five ships in a wave. And it got to the point where like every wave, like two or three of those ships would have some new, like basically game breaking ability or, or ability that they hadn't really thought out of how it would interact with something else. And it got to the point where in a game called X-Wing, the, the X-Wings and to a lesser extent, like the Y-Wings and the A-Wings, like the TIE Fighters, these ships that you think of as, oh, they should be the core of the game that everything else is built around, became unplayable because of the power creep. And I feel like in games like um, Heroes of the Storm uh, and Overwatch, there's obviously a little bit of power creep as well as they're trying to rush out. Like they want to get people excited about the new heroes. The yeah. best way to do that is maybe make them a little bit overpowered so people want to buy them. And it definitely happened in X-Wing too. Yeah. Oh, Heroes I would of the say Storm has had to rebalance. Yeah. They have had to rebalance characters for that reason. You know, yeah. like um, Rainer was one of the first heroes released, and he's a very standard just auto attacker. And they had to, like, I mean, he doesn't play completely different um, now, but he definitely had to have some things touched up on his kit to make him viable. Right. And it's like, you know, they did the same thing with now with X Wing because it's a it's a card game and a you know a model game. They had to come up with a whole second edition that was like, okay, here's all the new cards because we obviously can't just you know they can't do a quick. They would do FAQs and stuff, but I don't know if you guys have done any tabletop gaming, but trying to do a tabletop game with your rules, your cards, and then also like looking at a 300 point FAQ is a clusterfuck. Right. So they just came out with second edition. And, and as somebody fair, who plays D and D. Uh, I can say that, you know, having to stop and look everything up is something that we do on a regular basis. Yeah. Right. And, but and here's the thing, though. The when you've, if you've played D&D 5e versus Snacks and I right now are playing a game of Pathfinder, the rules are so much more streamlined in 5e that I enjoy not having to look things up for that reason. Pathfinder has a ton yeah. more options for you, which is awesome. Yeah. And that's why, like, Snacks' brother who runs our game likes that. But I like 5e personally if I have my choice because you don't have to spend as much time looking shit up. So sometimes that does need to happen. And it's good that X-Wing did that. Yeah. Well, and that's why, yeah, it, it is good because like a lot of people were really moaning and stuff. And I was like, my response was always, well, the game is completely broken. So like all these changes and they made multiple changes to the game and they were all to the, for the better. Mm -hmm. and, they stream, and they streamlined it and they also brought back Ships like the X-Wing, ships like the A-Wing um, became a little bit like more competitive. Basically, when you look at an X-Wing, that's a that's a middle of the road, you know, fighter. And that's what everything else should be based on. It shouldn't be at the bottom of the pack and like basically useless, except right. for maybe one or two pilots. So so they did a good job there. Now it was expensive. You know, you had to buy the new cards and stuff. But right. I'd rather I'd rather do that and not have the game be broken. My, yeah. my take I mean, on it is uh just in general with like you said the like the light the life uh for lack of a better term of a game like de determining when it's dead i mean there are some games out there that have like that like diablo 2 while it came out what in, like 98 or something like that mm -hmm. it, it still has i wouldn't say a super active community but an active enough community for blizzard to keep it online you know what i mean right well, mm -hmm. I, and I, I think we should look at that as the exception to the rule. And just because a game doesn't live up to that and doesn't have a 15, 20 year oh, lifespan, I, I doesn't agree. mean it's a failure. And I think yeah, some no, people, no, I agree. yeah, some people look at games like that, like, oh, Overwatch was a failure. Here's the storm was a failure. I'm like, well, by what metric? Like I had a lot of fun playing it. Now maybe it's time is over for me, but they made a lot of money off that game. So it's time to move on to the new game. I think where yeah. Blizzard right now is struggling a little bit, even though they're making money, is they kind of released, they went a long time without releasing any games. 
And then all of a sudden it seemed like they released, you know, uh, a big MOBA, a big hero shooter. They did a lot right in a very compressed period of time. So now all those games are starting to fall off at the same time. Whereas if they had maybe spread out the releases a little more, it, they, you know, some of these games would still have more active player bases. I don't think that that's all it, with Blizzard specifically. I mean, you have a little bit of a point, but Blizzard's a mismanaged company right now. They're, they're, oh, I agree. Out what they're doing. Well, I mean, that's, that's most of AAA gaming right now. But, it, but you know, here, here, here we go. We're talking about fads and things like that. I have two that I want to point out. Number one with Blizzard, okay? Yeah. Uh, and Diablo, okay? They're, instead of releasing a, another full Diablo game, because we're getting to that point where we should get one, they release, they announce um, Diablo, what is it, Immortal? Or whatever yeah, the hell it is. yeah, we talked yeah, about this a little bit in the right. last episode. So, but too. again, but that's a mismanagement. That's a fad. So phones yeah. are now big, right? You know, gaming on, on phones, that's a market. They want to get a piece of that market segment. And they decide, how, how much oh, let's of that try is to force Diablo over there. Well, you know, I, that's, I'm sure. that's what I, but, that's what I want to know. I, I think it's okay that they did that, that they're like, okay, we're going to make a, a mobile Diablo to kind of keep but you guys. Need, yeah. Right. But they needed to know that they needed to announce something else besides just that. It's the, fine. If you want to jump into announce, that, but that's why I'm saying they're yeah. mismanaged though, is they're mismanaged oh, yeah, because the, if, if that's your only announcement, then you're fucking up as a company. And it's because they're trying to jump onto the fad, that market segment, they want that. And yeah. here's the other one. Okay. I, I, I've played Dota since it was uh, a beta like uh, version of a custom map back in Warcraft 3. Oh, yeah. Um, so Dota has been around a long time. It still has a very active following. Um, Valve hasn't done shit really other than to buy up that name from Ice Frog, who's the guy who like made the map. And then they their new game that they just released is Artifact. They're jumping into the the trading card game market, which is, again, how do you compete with Hearthstone and Magic and some of these other ones? I just don't understand this well, and business even, decision. I, and then it it's kind of sucks. And it's if you look at their pricing model for it, it's way overpriced and it's a total cash grab. And the game is dead. It just yeah. released and it's dead already because <laughs> it's, this is like my penultimate. Like yeah, I, for me. I think, like, sorry, I'll let you talk. I just, like, talking about fads, that's the penultimate, like, right. fuck up mismanagement by a company. Um, well, like, it's, it you're jumping into like that purely just to get into that, and it's it's already not even, like, the most popular market segment. Right. Um, well, it's exactly. These, uh, these fad games are, what they're really doing is they're opening up new niche markets. And when it comes to the Battle Royales or the Hero Shooter or, uh, you know, the, the card games. That's a great example, by the way. But when it comes to those is the way I look at it, I think there's maybe room at any given time in these little niche, you know, segments for two games. So for, for the card games, you've got Magic and Hearthstone. And I would not invest heavily in that segment until one of those games really started to fade off. And then it's like, maybe you could be the new hotness and you could kind of pick something up. But you're absolutely right. It's like, okay, so now there's a third card game. And it's like, do people have time to do that? Do they have the interest in doing that? Like pretty much everyone that's going to be interested in a, in a card game, like a Dota card game, probably already plays Hearthstone. And they probably already have a lot of yeah. time and knowledge. Here's the thing, though. It. Here's the thing, though, before Snacks can say what he wanted to say. Um, there is a custom map, because Dota 2 released a custom um game maker you know within itself uh last year i think it was not that long ago someone made dota chess which is essentially a dota card game in a custom map so it's free and that has a huge following right now in dota it's like the most played custom game in the entire game and by far of any custom thing that's been made in dota probably better balance too right yeah. it's it's and people have written articles on it online. You can look them up. Like they're talking about how nicely balanced it is, how much more fun it is. The the artifact had a chance to to take those people's interest because there's a ton of people out there that like Dota. Like they just again, they're trying to jump into the fad market without doing their research. They're cash grabbing, and they fucked up. 
and like the game is dead and and they they were then beat out by a custom mod that someone made within well, then, their own dota game and the custom mod is probably a passion project and you know it's not just a, a cash grab like you said right right so it there is room if you do it right you just can't can't fuck it up like the fat thing is fine even like the the battle royale like it's fine apex you said they've they've done a lot of things right there's a lot of polished shit in it there's the the act um the what is it the intuitive pinging and all that stuff in the yeah. game that is very nice you know i'm sure yeah. that that's gonna see a good ear base for a little while but... unfortunately whether you look at it it's like either fortunately or unfortunately uh, PUBG was the first big big one and it's like, yeah, they were the ones first out of the shoots, and they are like the big one that was first out of the shoots, like the one that like got this huge mass appeal to it. Yeah, because there were That's, ones before. There were ones before, but nothing yeah, but, like as but PUBG. Big. PUBG is the one that everyone's chasing. Yeah, yeah. So. and that was the thing is like, um, like when I went to PAX in what now 2017, like that was the game that everybody because I was at the I worked at the. Uh, the free play station for the computers. Yeah. And it would be like, do you guys have PUBG? And I'm like, like nope. <laughs> we did not have PUBG installed on there. But people, what people were doing is they were logging into their Steam accounts, downloading oh, PUBG and playing it. it there. So, well, I think, so all of those kind of fad chasing the, the battle Royale and the card games and the, the MOBAs all kind of make sense to me. The one that I find most it just confuses me and I, I don't understand is Anthem chasing destiny because destiny is not a good game. Um, it, it has decent gun mechanics and stuff, but it's, it's a game that doesn't have a real story. They, they just completely fucked up, especially at the beginning. Like, Oh, you've got to go online and read articles to tell what the story is like, no, that's not how storytelling is done. That's why, that's why the game, I'm sorry, just didn't resonate with most people. And you can look at it as well. Destiny made money, but Destiny fell so far short of their expectations. Their expectation, and it was so expensive to make too. Oh, it was so expensive to make, and Destiny yeah. was supposed to light the world on fire. And what it became, they had a like, chance. Like it was, it had a decent concept as far as a lot of things that it did or yeah. wanted to do. And well, I you can't initially not have a had story. some fun with it. But yeah, it fell off real fast for me. Oh, I had I had fun with it for a week or two, and then I was like, "What? Like this is just a time sink." That's but, all. Yeah, but you know what I did is I played a lot like, more of yeah. the multiplayer than I did the like raiding and that kind of stuff, just because it reminded me of a little nostalgia like Halo multiplayer. That was right. It. And and I've never seen fans move the goalposts po- more than with a game when they're trying to defend Destiny. Because remember Destiny, they were like they were like, "We have a ten year plan for this game." Like, basically, there's going to be 10 years of, of DLC and all this stuff. That was a big thing. And then two years later, they're like, we're coming out with Destiny 2. And I, I went to fans of Destiny. I was like, so what happened to the 10-year plan? And they're like, oh, no, this this is the plan. They're going to come out with a new game. And I'm like, that's, that's not a 10-year plan for a game. That's what every developer wants. Every developer wants to sell you a new game every two years. How is that a 10-year plan for a right. game? That's completely disingenuous to say, oh, no, the plan from the beginning was always like, yeah, they're just going to come out with a sequel every two years. That's what every game company wants. It's not a fucking plan. A plan is like a game that would have a 10 year, not necessarily roadmap or plan, but a game that is the same game for 10 years is World of Warcraft. Because everything, every like, yeah, there's DLC and stuff and it was very expensive, but that's the same game. Like when you're playing World of Warcraft today, you're playing World of Warcraft. It's, you know, they haven't split the population up that much. But Whereas the DLC that's... for World of Warcraft isn't like 60 bucks. It's at least like 40 bucks or less, Right. You know? And it's and it's still like you can still just get in and play like you can still play the original game and, you know, obviously they've changed it a lot. That's but that's a game that changes and evolves over 10 years. Not, oh, it's been 2 years. Now if you want to continue, you've got to play it. you've got to buy Destiny 2. Right. Like, yeah. And and I I people are in such denial about it and they will defend in white knight destiny and be like, Oh no, this was the plan. And I'm like, are you, are you retarded? Like, I hate to say that, but Oh my gosh. And then, so this was a game that was moderately successful. Let's say it it didn't near, it wasn't nearly as successful as they wanted it to be, but I'm really confused that, um, Bioware looked at that and said, or, or whoever, you know, EA, EA, yeah, Yeah. EA is pulling Bioware's strings and says, 
hey, you see that game that was kind of successful and a, really a disappointment and didn't light the world on fire the way it was supposed to? Let's just copy that and maybe change a thing or two, and we'll we'll you know you'll sink or swim based but, on that. Yeah, this is my this is my exact point. If we're gonna say like the topic of the episode is fads in the gaming industry and what the hell's going wrong, there is a chance for Anthem to take that model and improve upon it and make the game that Destiny was supposed to be. Just like Artifact could have done that for card games and right. you know, all these other things. You can argue maybe Apex is is pushing the envelope or setting the new bar for Battle Royales and stuff. But yeah. um, you know, across the board in general, um, that's my problem with the gaming industry is it's like they're jumping in on these fads. They're Making the releasing same unpolished cash grab bullshit. Um where it's like, oh, you want you want to play? You have to buy like a hundred dollars in card packs or whatever the fuck it is, or you know, microtransactions and all this other shit too, to be able to get what you want or get something that resembles what you would want to be able to have in the game. Yeah, it just it feels like we're moving toward a collapse with with Bungie um, talking about getting rid of people, with Blizzard talking about getting rid of people. Um, you know, these layoffs, even though, you know, they're making money, but they're not making as much money as they want to make, I guess. And so their answer is, okay, we're going to get rid of staff. And it's like, it's because it's are... all crap, though. It's because yeah, they're releasing it's... crap. They're making money yeah. off of people who are jumping in and thinking like, oh, okay, the, the new novelty of the game is like got them interested. They're hooked in for a little bit. And they're like, okay, I want to I want to get all the stuff and keep my character looking really cool. And then they get bored and then they leave because the game well, doesn't have the polish to keep people there. There's a reason why World of Warcraft, people can criticize it um, to all they want. But overall, that's why every other uh, MMO has chased them. It's because yeah. in general, they... It's been successful. They, yeah, well, they, hugely yeah. successful. They have done what they need to do. Now, lately, again, they, they haven't been doing some of the things that they could and should be doing overall i still think the latest expansion has you know been pretty good but um you know i think a lot of the issues with it are because activision and blizzard are mismanaging overall across the board yeah but it, uh, uh, for the longest time you know that game was done the way an mmo should be done i guess right so like that's how everyone should be doing things you know and you know, every expansion for that for WoW has not been oh my god amazing, but overall, like they've done a decent job. So, like you know, you have to put forth somewhat of an effort. You're not going to hit the mark every time, but like, don't just like jump in and try to make your cash grab and do it half ass. Like that's yeah. that's all why. Destiny, all of these... and then then uh, I don't know if you have you guys played any of the Division two. No, and that's no. I, but I was just going to start talking. Cause I've, I've started playing the beta and it, it feels so I, I, I've only played like an hour and a half and it was so, you know, take my, what I say with a grain of salt, but like, it feels so samey to what the first one was. Oh yeah, of I course. Don't, I don't see myself being invested in it or wanting to play it. Even the thought, and this was, this was what I was going to say. It's funny. We both thought about the division at the same time, because even the thought of playing division two worries me. I, I, I was like, I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, so it's another, you're going to have a character, you're going to kill things to get loot so you can go kill more things and you're going to customize your character, but it really doesn't matter because you don't really have any interactions with anybody. And I'm just like, I just, I know I would play it for like a week and then never touch it again, which is exactly what I did with the division one. It's exactly what I did with destiny. It's the whole reason why I didn't buy Anthem. I just, I'm just not into these games and the whole anything that's that's going to be sold as a, a games as service. I, I just I'm just not into it right now. Yeah. Um, and I think and I don't know, maybe part of it is because I don't have as much hobby time as I used to. I mean, I'm in grad school. I work full time. Um, so I have to use and, and gaming is not my only hobby. I, I yeah. paint. I read. You know, I, I go to the gym when I can. It's like I have other things to do with my spare time. And I, the thought of just like playing one of these games sitting on a loot treadmill essentially yeah it, it yeah. just doesn't appeal to me anymore and i don't think it ever really did i'd much rather just sit and play halo and actually enjoy the time that i'm spending with the game instead of looking for this nebulous like oh if i do this i might get this gun which will make me have more fun in the game in the future it's like i uh, 
no, I'm not getting yeah. on that treadmill. But that's why um, I, I kind of agree with you, and I think that's why WoW has kind of fallen off for me a little bit because it has kind of turned into a loot treadmill a little well, bit. I, 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 said that, I said that in our group message the other yeah. day that that's kind of how I felt about it. Yeah, I just... Uh, for me, I re up every once in a while and play it, and I try the new expansions just because, like, Warcraft, the franchise itself, was one of the things that got me into gaming back in the day. I right. talked about that I think, when our last video love game. For the franchise. Yeah. yeah. The storyline from Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, like, God, that was so good. Like, I remember, like, playing through the game and thinking, like, this is so fucking sweet. Um, and WoW, like, WoW has a story to it. And, like, for the first several expansions and vanilla and all that, like, A, I had more time because I was in college and I was single and I could do what I want when I want. I didn't have a wife and kids and a job and other hobbies. And, right. Well, I had other hobbies, but you know what I mean. Yeah, gaming it's, was the primary it, the, one. The loot treadmill thing wasn't as bad to me because it was a newer game and, you know, I again, I have a special place for that, I guess. But, um these other games that are jumping in and like you said, it's, it's the story thing. Like, wow, at least still tries to have a story. Like even on the patches they have, they release more segments to the story for the expansion. Exactly. These other I, games as much as, you know, wow's a loot treadmill. They're just a loot treadmill with no story. Yeah. I will say like, that the story for destiny two is <laughs> in, it's better presented. Well, it would hard to it's, be worse. It's hard, yeah, it's <laughs> right. That's what I was going to say. Is I mean, Destiny that's not 1, I was like, what the hell is it even trying to say right now? Right. Yeah. And also, even even the names of the kid, the darkness and this and that, it's like, did a 12-year-old write this? Like, even what it's presenting to me was really stupid. And then when I went on and I, I read more about it, because you had to read on their website, it's like, shouldn't I learn about the game by playing the game? I don't really want homework. Yeah, yeah, that was my biggest thing in the original Destiny is you play through the story mode part to get to the end game and your character's going places and they're meeting these like evil looking people or someone in, who's supposed to be important and I'm like, I have no idea who this What's is. What's going on? Yeah, no, the game the game didn't tell you anything like the whole time and you're just lost and you're adrift and you're like, why yeah. what am I what am I doing? Why am I interested in this? Yeah. It was really from for the from the team that brought us Halo which I think has one of the most compelling, it's not super complex, but it's it's a very compelling story that you feel like you're right in the middle of and you feel yeah. like you are the most important character to go from that to, to Destiny where you're like, I don't even know what the stakes are anymore. Like, I don't yeah. understand why people are attacking us. Like, you, you knew from... For as simple as Halo was, Guilty Spark, <laughs> right? Um, yeah there was that sense of awe when you like see the halo ring and they explain to you the implications of like the life in the galaxy being wiped out. If this thing fires kind of a thing, like exactly <clears throat> that's it's, it doesn't have to be overtly complicated. It can no, just be, it's, you know, it just has to, has, has to make sense. And that's what I'm saying is as much as wow, still a loot treadmill. There are, there's a story, you know what you're doing. And as you're leveling up through the zones, even and stuff in every expansion, you are playing through a storyline as you level up through your right. loot, loot. It's a loot right. treadmill, but, but they're telling you what's going on and you're participating in something. And exactly. like, there's even like the last expansion uh, here, um, battle for azeroth you're, you're doing these quests in like these zones in the alliance side and in the horde side and if you're alliance then you go over to the horde side or the horde then you go to the alliance side then you launch like offensive missions against them in the other team's zones and as you do these little like sabotage missions and that kind of stuff then in this last patch that they release there's a buildup and they they show you like what that did to the other people like there's like this big battle and then they release this next raid which is like a fight between the two sides and mm -hmm. there was like a buildup and a some kind of payoff at least as far as the storytelling goes may not be your favorite thing in the world but they're at least attempting to do something yeah when well, you're the, the only game ahead. the only like game that's really grindy that it, i would almost say it's for loot but it's a little different that ever captured my imagination was is war thunder and again part of that is because i played in vr i feel like i'm really flying an aircraft and also every time you unlock a plane it could be a completely different experience because it's not just a gun with slightly different stats 
it's based on a real world plane that you know might handle completely differently and but that's more you, of a simulator and if yeah, you that, love planes like you do then there's yeah. and, and there's and there's and there's no story but when it comes to when it comes to just shooting games I, i'm not nearly as involved but like i i could see i right well, now like i don't play counter strike for the story because there's no story. right You're it, playing exactly. after the purely competitive like dota really doesn't it's, have a story they have these characters exactly. these heroes and they kind of put a little bullshit backstory on them but like no one cares about that it's about the competitiveness and the working as a team to achieve yep. victory right what those but if you're but if you're going to have a big open world game where the main uh, you know the main plane is um pve which destiny is you know destiny and anthem it's it's pve stuff where you're getting loot you have to have story for that you can't yep. just be go out kill these mobs kill this boss come back repeat 55 times i mean i guess some people can but I don't yeah. know. Some people collect stamps. I, I don't understand. You know, <laughs> no, but the, that's if you MMOs as much as they're grindy, there's some PVP to them and stuff too. There is, um, there does have to be a story. That end game boss that you're going to fight with all your friends in your guild, like has to have something compelling about them. And again, with Destiny, yeah, I had no clue what the alien robots were <laughs> that we were fighting. I had no idea. I played the first raid with Destiny, of Destiny with Snacks. And I remember thinking like, who are we even fighting? I don't even know. We're in this vault thing. Like, what yep. the fuck is this? Well, and all the aliens were so creative. You had the big, tall aliens. You had the shorter aliens. You had the dog alien. And you had the flying alien for every race. They all had the same shit. <laughs> right. So it's like, so, who, and it, who gives a crap? Right. And that that kills your player base. People will lose interest real fast if you're half-assing it like that. I mean, again, yep. I go back to WoW. There's been a couple expansions where they've come under big criticism for their choices for very meh uh, bad guys and things like that. And those are the expansions that haven't done as well. You know, so these other people, like, I, I feel like you have to learn. You have to see these trends in the industry, right? And know, like, what you're doing. And it's there's the pricing model. Like, again, Artifact, I think that's its biggest problem is you have Dota. It's popular. Like I said, the storyline in Dota is meh, but you could have built on that with Artifact, and I think they did try to. But, like, your pricing model is ridiculous. So, like, you're not well, going to get people to want to try that, you know? Well, so, well, sometimes you have to go against the grain, too. And I think, um, we'll see, but I think uh, Cyberpunk with CD Projekt Red, see, to me, they're not really chasing anything. They're, they're doing their own thing, and they're really, it's a passion project, and it looks like it's going to be really, really good. Um, we'll see when it gets a little closer to release and when it comes out. But that's like, of all these games, that's the one I'm excited for. And that you one's, can, I, yeah. I think you can generally tell when, you know, a game is a labor of love versus, yeah. Yeah. you know, for the money. Well, look at, look at your Dark Souls games, or, you know, um, you can look at uh, Fallout New Vegas. You know, you can look at Fallout New Vegas and compare yeah. it to Fallout 76 and be like, okay, which one is a cynical cash grab and which one did the studio bust their ass to make the best game they possibly could? And it's like right. obvious, you know? Yeah, I mean, some of those, you know, you're talking about like single player RPGs. You look at CD Projekt Red and you got the Witcher series and like that's obviously like a labor of love for them. They, they took those novels that whatever his name wrote and they built them into this like i mean they did it justice right it's a very yeah. compelling story that's an rpg so you would hope to god that that's the case right i um i mean i play a decent amount of rpgs and most of them are pretty good i i thought that fallout 4 was fairly interesting um not, not the story in that is obviously not i mean it's kind of a the same thing from the other ones it's just in a new location but there's yeah, cool I, they have I would cool say the, little like easter eggs and stuff that lots you of them. That, little side quests that are very cool that that's yeah that's the thing with bethesda as much as they are screwing up in some areas right now too like right. skyrim you play that and stuff like you play the little sideline in skyrim where you're in the thieves guild or or you know whatever and the assassins guild like those are cool you get to the end of that and you kind of feel like wow that was fun that was worth it you know what i or mean or all or all the daedra missions that you kind of stumble into right um right. that all have very bizarre you know graphics and storylines so i remember the old far cries had that too like yeah. far cry 3 where you uh, was it two or three Far Cry where you're on the island and you you have the drug trip missions where the graphics are completely different and insane things are happening and I was like wow this this stuff really keeps me interested right for a single player RPG 
you would hope that they would do that, right? You you would think so. So like, there's some companies out there in that area still that are doing it great. I think um, there's some other that aren't doing as well, but you know, you're not going to be expected to do all of that with MMOs or these sh- shooters and things like that. But you got to try to like, that's why I think overwatch does a decent job in the shooter category because they have heroes. Okay. Which is not completely unique in that category, but um, they really try to flesh out the backstory and they release a lot of free stuff. Um, that's not, I mean, you talked about you going on the website for um, background and stuff on things that shouldn't be like the only way you're getting it. Um, but it's a good supplement that like Blizzard has done. Well, them, and for a, for a game that's basically an arena shooter, that's a little different. Yeah, but they've done a decent job with it. You know, they they, they they released a new level, right? They released a new map that you are going to play on, and they try to set up like a a little bit of meaning behind it. So, like, yeah, I think there's better world building in that than there was in anything in Destiny One. Right, that's what I'm saying. Is like, it doesn't take that much effort, I think, to to do a little bit of that. And like Blizzard, I think, goes a little overboard almost with some of that stuff. But like, you know you don't have to do it quite to the degree that they're doing it in order to get people interested. But I think that's why overwatch probably will have a decent following for a while. I would think just because they. Oh yeah. I I don't think overwatch. And that's why I said some people talked about, Oh, it's a dead game because player base has maybe shrunk a little bit. It's like, well, the game's been out for a while. That might be a natural, you know, thing. Yeah. That's going to totally naturally happen over time. But I mean, we'll see. Um, I don't know. I just feel like some of that is that's how you do it. I think like the Overwatch team at Blizzard are the like the ones doing it the best of any of them because they yeah. you can tell like um, God, what's the name of the guy who's like the head of the Overwatch team there? Like you can like whenever he releases a developer update, number one, he releases developer updates all the time. You can tell that he's like it's like a passion project for him. Um, yeah, he's he's invested in it and he cares about what people think and he's saying hey and being transparent about changes and things like hey yep. we hear you and all that kind of stuff like that's what you do these some of these other companies it's like what the hell so like um the division two i have no interest just like yeah you know, i really i really have no which is sad because i actually never played the first one just based on the reviews i heard and that's sad because it well it took forever that was part of the reason i got but, halfway through the story and i i normally am a completionist if i start mm-hmm. a game that has a story i almost always it. i got half the story and just completely right i think i think i didn't play for a weekend and i just i never went back to it i, know but I remember being so excited for it we 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 played a lot we did i know spaz and you and i we we played a lot in the dark zone and we kind of just leveled up with that and yeah it kind of just fell off and uh, you know my my cousin who uh played the first one and played destiny he thinks those games are like fantastic and he told me like i asked him the other day in a text message i was like so how is anthem and he's like oh it's so awesome i was like oh wow really I, i have I've heard nothing but bad things about it, but he couldn't tell me, he couldn't quantify for me what is good about it other than he had fun with it, which is fine. But I was like, what's good about it? Like what's it's supposed to be, it was supposed to be to quote, to quote him himself, the destiny killer. So I said, what does it do differently than destiny? It's newer. (laughs) Uh, Other than, and I was like, and it looks, I said, it looks pretty. That's all I can say about it. Yeah. Um, well, I, one thing I've noticed with those shooters, and this is a minor complaint, is I, I thought this about Destiny too, and I and I it looks like it from Anthem. There's a lot of like effects shit going on. It seems like when you shoot your guns and hit the enemy and stuff. And I don't know. I like I like it to be a little cleaner than that. I I don't. It seems like there's like glowing lines and like gas explosion. I don't know. It every time I watch somebody play one of those games, I'm like, it looks very cartoonish uh, compared to what I like, you know, Halo, Halo had some shield stuff and, you know, lasers and stuff, but it didn't look like a fireworks display. Every time somebody got into a gunfight, it didn't obscure your own vision with the effects from your gun. Yeah. But, yeah. All yeah. right, boys. Well, I, we covered a lot tonight. I think we actually talked longer than we uh, thought we were going to. Yeah. I have one more thing, one parting thought. And I know I've said this to, to uh, web before, and back when we were talking about Valve and stuff like that, I am convinced, and maybe I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist, that well, everybody, you are. At, everybody at Valve is dead, and Valve is being run by a rogue AI. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. just propagates itself by, like, and, you know, creating more uh, uh, cosmetic skins for its games. <laughs> that's why it's Valve hasn't released any content. Cosmetic skins. It's, it's most yes. community driven in that regard. Well, so. well, you know what I mean. Like that's how that's how it like yeah. keeps, that's how it sustains itself. <laughs> right. You know, in a way, in a way, Valve is incredibly brilliant because they were a video game company that doesn't need to make video games anymore. Like that. That's that's incredibly I mean, successful. That's a whole different. I, even if Artifact kind of dies, even if Artifact dies. They still make a shit ton of money off of Counter Strike and Dota. So Oh yeah. They own Steam. Steam makes all the money in the world. Steam is, is the biggest money generating thing in the history of video games. It makes everything else I, I mean that's why that's yeah. why Origin exists. That's why you want to talk about the like, chasing trends. That's why now every company is trying to have their own storefront because they looked at what at what Valve has done with Steam and yeah. they're like they're they're on a giant throne of money that they don't right. even know what to spend it on. Like what if you're Steam legitimately with your 125 employees or whatever they have it's not a huge company what, what do you do with the literally billions and billions of dollars that come in don't build like, artifact <laughs> i mean you, you would think you know maybe they would do like half-life but yeah i don't know apparently making games is, is yeah. hard and they can't be bothered I, with it so i know f- a long uh, a couple of years ago they were talking about like you know they were they were doing like a lot of research in like uh, games and stuff, uh, not just like, but like uh, psych- psychologically and like tech wise, like what gets people like hooked into games, you know, psychologically. And then like, what kind of technology can we use to like kind of push uh, games forward? I know a while ago, uh, Gabe Newell had talked about like uh, eye tracking technology and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do I do appreciate what they've done for VR because that's been, you know, the the Vive, their their partnership with the Vive and everything and their own headset that they're working on and all that. Like that will help push VR even for, like farther forward, which I'm looking forward to. But I don't know. It's it's just a very strange situation all that's they find fine. themselves in. Yeah, all that's fine. And um and my last thought I guess is is, you know, even if they don't release games, like I'd rather them not release a game. And just sit on their throne of money, then release a shitty game like Artifact, or and release these shitty games that are coming out in these other categories that I talked about. Because yeah, that's right, and that's, that's what I'm saying is with all doing that a money, disservice to yeah. the customer base and to the industry as a whole, and that's yeah, why a bunch with of all that people money are laying should. off. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Um, well, on that note, uh, it, is uh, anybody? How's everybody's uh, week so far? Any 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 new developments? For your video games, um, I have gotten really into IL Two, which is another flight simulation game that's in VR. It doesn't have the grinding; you get all the planes, and if you want any others, you have to just buy them. But nice. there's a way smaller. Instead of there being like thousands of planes, there's like a dozen. So you mm-hmm. get a lot of them just with the base games, and then there's a couple you can pick up. That's um, cool. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot more realistic um, than War Thunder. You have to actually like, you know. Cool, like manage the cooling of your plane, the oil radiator, the water radiator, cowl flaps. Um, it's it's a totally different thing, but it was a little intimidating when I started like getting into it. But now that um, I have all my controls set and I've got them all memorized and I've I've kind of learned the game, it's been fun. It's a lot harder to shoot somebody down, but when you do, it's a lot more satisfying because you know how much harder you worked for it. Nice. Um, and also, they actually modeled the uh, siren on the Ju eighty seven. So when you do your dive bomb, the little siren goes off, and it's kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but other than that, um, I've kind of been getting more back into the into the hobby, um, like my Warhammer and my um, Star Wars Legion. I've been doing a lot of painting and stuff lately. So I've been trying to trying to spread things out, and not spend all my free time on video games. Nice. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying to trudge my way through some of my stuff in my backlog. And I say charge because like some of the stuff that I stopped playing, there was reasons why I stopped playing. Right. <laughs> um, but lately, um, I I bought Kingdom Hearts three because I played the first two and I played some of the other side games, and I just can't really. I just cannot get into it. I played for like I've six heard it's hours, and I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. I, but I want to yeah. finish it because Sekiro is coming out in a couple weeks, and I am going to devour that. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing that, that yeah. Kingdom Hearts is a disappointment, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I haven't. I, I like I said, I'm only a couple worlds in, and I'm not like hooked into anything. The combat is very 
for as for as long as it took, the combat does not feel very fluid. There's a lot of interruptions with like the uh, switches between your uh, like attacks and stuff like that. There's it, it it's just I don't know maybe and maybe there's a way to turn it off. I don't know. I haven't looked into the options or and stuff, but like it just feels very uh, like combat is interrupted and isn't very fluid. Mm, that's a shame. That's a shame that it it wasn't polished. But all right, well, um, what about you, Weebed? So, other than my my normal staples, uh, I finally decided to go back and finish the expansions to Witcher Three. Um, I played through the main storyline of it like all in one go and devoured it, as you said. Uh, and I got a little burnout. As much as the game was awesome, like I. I was like really into it and I went to go like start Hearts of Stone and I was like I think I actually just need to take a break and maybe I'll be more refreshed to come back to it later so I'm, I just started back into that <laughs> and it's I'm enjoying it I'm about two hours onto the island of Skellige and something about switching islands I, I lost all I love the game it's a great game but when I got to Skellige I kind of lost all steam with it so I'm gonna have to go back and and play at some point and just finish it. I think I'm about halfway through the campaign, maybe. Yeah, um, keep playing through it. It's it's worth it. It's worth it. Web, did you uh, uh, attempt to do a threesome with Triss and Yennefer? Is that an option? I didn't, yeah, but I didn't get the <laughs> option to it because I don't think that I picked the right love. Uh, um, trust so, me, when I say don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because if you play both sides of the fence, you get neither one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, that I knew and I didn't know. So I kind of, I, my character is kind of locked in on Triss, which is a shame because I find Yennefer more attractive personally. Although Yennefer is like the more dangerous one. And, well, I, I spent the entire game mostly like trying to romance Yennefer. And then the yeah. opportunity presented itself. I'm like, oh, that's actually an option. All right, let's, let's see what happens. Well, I see, I already, I already romanced Triss before she left on the boat and like told her I loved her. I guess that's the big thing. I, I, somebody said online, like, if you tell her you love her, then it's like, you're locked in. And if you, if you then romance Yennefer. So I have a, I have a save where I was like YOLO and I did romance Yennefer as well. But my main save afterwards, like that's where my game splits my main save. I like just turned her down and just am going on with my life. So the game is so big, like in a game like Skyrim, I would probably play through twice for that, but I can't imagine playing through this game twice just for two different romance options. Well, and I'm playing on Death March too, so. Oh God, yeah, that's right. I think I, <laughs> I, I am not. I think like, I, I was playing on like a, one of the harder difficulties and I got curb stomped by a troll or something. And I was like, oh, we're going to pull back that difficulty a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but you're a masochist. Well, my thought on it is that like, eventually Geralt becomes so overpowered that like even the small shit is easy to kill. And, um, you know, there are certain games where like, that's pretty satisfying. Like, you know, I would say dark souls when you're more powerful and you go to the smaller guys again, like, uh, in the first dark souls game, one of the bosses that you fight in the beginning becomes a common enemy in an area. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so I don't know. It, I feel like I would have been so overpowered by the end because I did a lot of side quests and a lot of exploring that the the final boss would have just been a joke. And I was like, well, I kind of want it to be a little bit satisfying when I fight him. I was a little overpowered at the end of the regular campaign, but I find in Hearts of Stone, I'm like kind of not overpowered and I'm playing on a medium difficulty in the game. So like the first boss thing in Hearts of Stone I actually like had a little bit of trouble with at first. Hmm. So but anyway, all right. All right, uh I guess we're going to sign out. We will probably do a Captain Marvel review coming up next week after the movie releases. Thanks for listening everybody.